What's up, Tokos? It's Trent, aka O Trademark here. And yesterday I made the video about five reasons Call of Duty Ghosts will suck. And I knew it was going to get a lot of hate and uh, dislikes and attention, but uh, actually it was received a lot better than I thought it would be. So uh, thank you for that. And let me just clear some things up for any of you that did watch that video. Originally, I was going to do a video about my thoughts on the multiplayer reveal. But I knew dozens of other commentators were going to do the same thing. In fact, you might have seen four or five that you already watched. So I thought outside the box and I decided that I was going to do a top five likes and dislikes about Call of Duty Ghosts. Now, when I say top five reasons Ghosts will suck, it's not that I really think Call of Duty Ghosts is going to be a bad game. I've been a fan of Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 1. I love Call of Duty games. I am such a fan that I created an entire YouTube channel and website based around the series. But just because I'm a fan of the series and I am passionate about the game does not mean that I agree with everything that the developers do to it. It's quite opposite, actually, because I, because I am so passionate about Call of Duty, I want it to be the best game it can possibly be. I want it to be game of the year. I want it to be innovative and progressive. So when I see them make blatant mistakes with the game year after year, it worries me. And um, as a consumer, there are really only two ways you can voice your opinion about changes. Uh, that should be made to a product and actually influence that product. The first thing is is just don't buy the product, right? If enough people don't buy something, it informs the producer that they need to improve their product if they want to keep their customers. And the second thing you can do is voice your opinion and gather support around you and around whatever movement you are creating that you want something changed. And if enough people do that, and if enough, if enough people support what you're proposing, uh, occasionally the creators of, of these products will listen. Um, to give you a, a, a clear-cut example, the Xbox One did a complete reversal on their DR, DRM policies, and I did a video about this because that was directly, that was di directly influenced by two things. One was the huge social media outburst and cry from the community that they didn't like the policies. And two, it was the lack of pre-orders that, that were a direct reflection of what people thought about the Xbox One. And, you, and you've noticed that as soon as the Xbox One did that reversal, they've almost caught up to PS4 in pre-orders. So they were way behind PS4, and I mean, the community like gathered together proposed change they you know they changed those policies and and uh, a lot of good or supposedly a lot of good came from it what the com consumers wanted happened and uh, that's what I'm doing you know I think Call of Duty is a great franchise I don't think any of the COD games are terrible okay I've bought them all since Call of Duty 4 I've been playing them for a long time but I do think they could be a lot better I do think there are a lot of improvements that they could make that aren't even that aren't even subjective changes that aren't even adding things to the game just fundamental change to the game which is you know which is what some of my videos are going to relate to in the coming months but let's get right into it here are the top 5 improvements I feel they are bringing to Call of Duty Ghosts Number 5 Customizable characters are something that I've wanted in Call of Duty since they had face paint in Black Ops 1. I think customizable characters and weapon camos and player emblems and all of these visual changes that you can customize, they're a great way to increase player satisfaction. Being able to customize the way your character looks creates a new level of personalization in the game. You can make your character look however you want. And as a side note, creating rare DLC unlockables and a trading system, kind of like Team Fortress 2 with hats and some of these other games do, it's a great way to transition Call of Duty into a free-to-play model. But uh, I won't go into that because that would take an entire commentary to talk about. Number four. 
I loved the cash unlock system in Black Ops 1, and I think players shouldn't be forced to reach a certain level to unlock the items that they want. They should be able to earn unlocks and earn points and then unlock weapons, perks, or equipment in whatever order they want that suits their own playstyle. So I really like that they're allowing you to unlock items in any order as soon as you have enough points to unlock it. I think that's a, that's a great improvement and it's something that I've that I've always wanted to be a part of Call of Duty. Number three. Allocating a set worth for each item in the creative class system is very important to achieving game balance. The biggest issue with the pick 10 system of Black Ops 2 is that not all items and perks are created equal. There's clearly weapons, perks, and equipments that are superior to others within their same tier, which is why some items are used far more often than others. So, by allocating a set number of points for each item, it's, it's much easier to attain balance within your game because you can increase or decrease the value of a particular item, how many points they're worth, and effectively nerf or buff the item. Number two. The new movement system, if it is implemented well, is a great improvement to the Call of Duty series. Leaning, mantling, and sliding are all ways that you can immerse the player into the game. A game's interface shouldn't interrupt your experience. How many times have you guys been playing Call of Duty and you try to jump over something only to get stuck in that clunky climb animation and die? It happens to me all the time. Your movement should feel fluid and it should respond how you want it to. If you want to slide, slide into cover, now you can. If you want to peek around a corner before you go in, now you can. If you want to mantle the object in your way and you don't want to get stuck in some goofy climb animation, now you can. A while back there was a game called Brink that had a smart movement system, as they called it, that was very similar to this and I loved it. But it was buggy and the game was crap, so not many people know about it. So as long as the developers can implement this system and it's not glitchy, and it adds rather than detracts from your experience, I think this will be a great improvement. Number one. Now, it's kind of ironic that I list the number one improvement in this game as something that is being removed from it, but I truly believe that removing as much bullshit from a game as possible improves everyone's overall experience. I can't count how many times I've heard players say that a previous Call of Duty would have been great if it just didn't have a few things in it. For example, Modern Warfare 2 would have been great if it just didn't have One Man Army and Danger Close Noob Tubes. Black Ops 1 would have been great if it just had the new Black Ops 2 Ghost. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 would have been great if it just didn't have uh, death streaks and lethal support streaks. Now, a lot of that can be written off as nostalgia, but I truly believe that an enjoyable first-person shooter game is one that is exciting, balanced, and fun. And bullshit deaths just take away from all three of those things, so it's best that they are just left out of the game. But anyways, guys, that's my top five improvements that I feel like they're bringing to Call of Duty Ghosts. I really do hope that they make this game exciting and balanced and fun, and overall, I just want an enjoyable experience. But uh, Malo Alpito, thanks for watching, and I'm out of here.